Okay, this is one of the most important things that you're going to need to learn for programming. In programming, there's something called a variable. And variables are um, something that you're going to be using all the time. We normally don't just print something like 5 plus 6 um, out to the screen or to anything, um, like a file. But we'll normally, what we call, assign it to a variable. So it's sort of like um, in computer jargon, they call it, call it a placeholder. For me, it's sort of like a tag that you put on something um, or like, you know, having like a, a box or something um, where you store something inside. Um, and what is important about this is that you need to make sure that whatever you store inside of that is intuitive enough to you. For example, if you think of it as a file, if you think of a variable as a file um, or a folder that holds important information, then normally you would name the file um, if, it's, if it's containing data of a specific employer, uh, employee um, that, and, and a specific year um, that pertains to the work that, that that employee did, then you would, for example, name it um, Felicity Jones 2019. Um, and you will know that that's all of what is in there is everything that you did in 2019. So it's very important to name it intuitively, although, again, if you're just starting off, you would think it's cool to just call it banana is equal to five plus six. And that's fine. But once you start really coding, naming things, appropriately is going to save your life uh, because you can get so confused once your code start to grow about what exactly is in there so tell it exactly that it's a line that it's a word that it's a letter um, that it's a new line that it's a formatted line um, you know just name them appropriately okay so here we got first number and obviously this is a this in this case is an actual number there's no quotes around it um, I've, I've named a variable first number, and this is how you, this is where the equal signs come in. So this is this is when you will use equal, um, not when you're just printing a sum or an equation, but when you're assigning something, you would say first number. And note, I've got an underscore there because you can't have spaces in between. And you would say first number is equal to one, second number is equal to two, and then add two numbers is equal to first number plus second number now anybody who doesn't even know how to code will read that and they will know it's intuitive they can see exactly what my code is doing okay so again note name them intuitively for you and for anybody else who's going to read your code okay then we can print sorry And you will see that if I try to print this, nothing will happen. Because again, you need to have, a, it's just storing this. So it's almost like a file that is given, um, and, but the file is closed. And if you want to see what's inside the file, you're going to have to open it. In Python, opening it and seeing what's inside is the print statement. So now if you print, add two numbers, then you will get the answer to that. Okay. Now, there are rules again for, for, like I said, for name for using variables or naming your variables. Um, and there can't be any spaces or tabs or anything of the sort in between it, no lines um, at the start of the variable or in between um, the variable. For example, first number, as you saw there, had an underscore between it uh, to make sure that they bound to each other. Um, so you can't have indentations also. You can't have a tab, two spaces, anything like that at the start of the line. It must start at the start of the line for the variable name. Um, unless we'll get there, unless we are coding in a certain way where indentation um, is, needs to be applied, um, then obviously it will follow that indentation. Okay, but we'll get there. Uh, you also can't use words that are already built into Python. So words such as print, true, false, you you might not, like true and false might not seem, seem um, or make sense at this point in time, but you will see that, that those are built in words in Python. 
So you can't use something that Python. So in other words, true, false, those are things that are already variable names that Python, the built-in program Python has assigned something to. And so you can't use those ones. Um, and but it will give you an appropriate error um, that will tell you. So you don't have to go learn the entire <laughs> everything about Python to know which ones you can't use. Um, uh, also, when you use a variable name twice, it will it will make an, a new um, or the the latest one that you use. Whatever you stored in there, that will become um, the if, the new thing that is in that variable. So if I is if I say Jane is equal to nine, um, and I print that, and then directly after that I say Jane is equal to ten, then Jane now holds a number ten, no longer nine. So it will replace it with whatever is most recent. If you start any line with this um, hashtag, then Python, or in most coding languages, it will say, "Do not execute this line." This is just me giving a leaving a comment. You can put that anywhere at the start or at next to um, any of your code. Just and it's very it's encouraged for you to use um, these comments throughout your code, especially when your code starts to become a little more complicated because you're going to want to remember what you did there. Sometimes it's not as intuitive as this uh, first number, second number, and add two numbers. Um, and it might be multiple things inside another bracket, inside another bracket, you know, like applying, um, rounding to something after executing something inside a bracket, then stripping off something, all things that you will learn about later. So you might want to put a comment in there that says, this line does this, this, and this. In normal language, not in Python jargon. Okay. And like I said, meaningful names so that your code is easy for you to read and for others in case you ever have to look at that code a few years later. Okay, so um, let's go into the bioinformatics side of things. Okay, so yeah, I've got a string of characters which are nucleotides made consisting of ATGC. Um, and I've assigned it to something called my DNA. Um, and you can see again, I've got my quotes around that, and this is intuitive. And I've used my equal sign to show that this needs to be stored inside this variable. I then printed this, or I can print it. If I don't leave this, it will just, if I leave this out, if I remove that, nothing will happen, but something will be stored. Nothing will happen for you to see, but something is happening in the background. So if you want to actually see what's in there, you need to use the print statement and you can see it. Okay. Um, again, if I then use my DNA again, like I said, then it's going to, re and, I, and I assign something new to that, it's now no longer going to contain this, but my DNA is now going to contain the new thing. So just be careful. Um, I have had my my times when I've printed something, didn't know I was using the variable name again, couldn't figure out what my code wasn't giving me what I wanted, and it was because I, I used the variable name more than once. 